In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new type of game that I've developed over the last 15 years of my coaching career. This cycle gives you a comfortably attractive communication pattern that pretty much when done right can get you dating the type of girls that you really want consistently, predictably, and quite simply. And how do I know this? Because I've used it myself over 15 years to date my version of my perfect 10. And I've taught it to hundreds of students to do the same, no matter what their type looks like. Now this way of being allows you to date higher quality partners by being more of who you are. When I did the math, I've actually done over 35,000 cold approaches in the last 15 years to really figure this out. And I've also dated some of the most amazing women that I'm so thankful for that really helped me fine tune this process. I really have to give credit because I couldn't have done it without my mentors. So not only does the authentic attraction cycle work, but it's super fun to do. It won't feel pushy or try hard because the whole process balances and teases out your natural personality the more you practice it. From a former 23 year old virgin to dating models at Fashion Week, to my students who've used this to date their dream girls, finding dates after years of being alone. From young ambitious professionals to college students to established entrepreneur bosses. This model works no matter what you look like, how much money you make, or what your perceived social status is right now. Let's break it down. There are three main phases of the cycle. The first phase is style attraction. Most guys think style is about clothes and following style tips, but it's just not true. It's about how you move through life, the outer expression of your inner self. In my course, Seduce With Style, I talk about the eight universal style attraction triggers that I figured out that got me into modeling after years of following thousands of style advice. And for a few years, I was able to establish super high value with model quality girls within seconds of meeting them. The second phase are attraction triggers and really comfort layers. So what I learned from my mentor, Eric, is that you need both attraction and comfort to properly get the girl. As men, we only need attraction, right? We're light switches, but as women, it's more of a slow dial and they need to feel comfortable. And there are ways to do this efficiently. The third step are connection triggers and escalation. Now, as a minority, I often faced unconscious social bias in my interactions and no one else understood these. So I had to develop these out of necessity. I realized that with the proper connection sequences, I can get a girl super invested in me. I learned these triggers from studying a lot of different work, but the foundation of it is based on Dr. Helen Fisher's work in the science of how people fall in love. More on this in a second. These are the fundamentals. And like my mentor DJ Fuji said, fundamentals are the key to really mastering any skill. They might sound boring, they might not be fun to do, it's not sexy, people want to learn the new and improved techniques, the latest moves, but the reality is that the fundamentals that you learn evolve into different layers as you get better and better. A good analogy I use is salsa dancing. That one, two, three, five, six, seven, those six steps are completely different when you look at a beginner versus a master. As you get better, you learn different layers of how those steps actually work, the muscle isolations, the body movements, and you get better and better. Now, in between these phases, you may have heard of other techniques like bantering, push and pull, keno escalation, approach invitations, dominance versus sexual game, and maybe some other type of amazing techniques. All of these come from different types of coaches and they can all work. But to me, all these are bonuses. In other words, they're pretty advanced and they're complex variations of the fundamentals of game. Really attraction, comfort, and connection are the main fundamentals embedded in every good romantic interaction that involves high value women. My mentor Eric first came up with the M3 model that changed my life. For the first time, I realized that there can be a structure to the skill that getting good with women that I was so bad at. So now I'm building upon it to create a smoother, more authentic type of game without having to rely on being super alpha, super douchey, or super like cool. In other words, it's an art form of effortless attraction. If we use a martial arts analogy, if what other coaches are teaching is like boxing or street fighting, then what I'm teaching is more like Jiu Jitsu, Tai Chi, and Jeet Kune Do. A more formless type of game that adapts to the client's own personality and uses the other person's force, the girl's energy, to balance out that interaction and seek the truth. I hope that one day when I'm gone, <laughs> this will be of some value to some people 
and maybe you can take this model and even improve on it further. At the end of the day, any dating model, right, should be based on how can I make this interaction the most fulfilling for the end user, the girl, and the person who's running it. So how do you feel? Do you have fun? Do you feel great about yourself? Do you feel more authentic? All while at the same time being the man who is attractive, who provides an amazing experience for her, who makes her feel comfortable yet connected and deep, and also fun and exciting. Let's get into it. So A0, a great general once said that the war is won before the first shot is even fired. And this is where A0 comes in. Before you even say the first word, the game is already on. The actor that walks on stage, he's not acting the moment he says his first line. He's acting the moment he steps on stage. The spotlight is on him. When you walk into a venue, the way you walk into the venue, the friends that you have, the alliances that you have, the vibe that you're giving, the game is already on. How you're dressed, how you look, how you're moving. All of these attract women and can set you up for success. A lot of guys don't understand the importance of style, elite style in particular. Guys usually lack dominance, eliteness, and openness. The three factors that make women not only perceive you as a high status guy, but also sexy and also approachable. In other words, you want to hit these triggers as quickly as possible. Dominance and eliteness spikes attraction and openness spikes comfort. Having good style in the beginning makes the rest of the game 10 times easier. You literally do one tenth of the work compared to guys who don't get this. So it's so important if you want to learn more about style and mastering your style, I have a whole course using the eight style trash and triggers called Seduce with Style. Check out the link below, okay? A1 becomes nonverbal triggers. Now, whenever you go talk to someone for the first time, there is a moment where you get their attention. So a lot of guys would say, hey, how's it going? And they'll throw out some lines. When I go up to a girl, I kind of get her attention. I'll say, hey, and I'll make sure that there's a moment there where I take the time to appreciate her and say, and then I deliver my line. It's a very subtle, but very key point that most coaches miss. Now, as you talk to her, that first sentence, there's gonna be a little bit of a frame battle. Like, is this guy for real? Does he mean what he says? Is he congruent? And also, are you going to flinch? When you're going up to talk to girls that maybe you're not used to talking to or are exceptionally beautiful according to you, the first few times, you're gonna feel this little, like you're not used to it. And this is a normal reaction, actually, from tribal days where if we went up and talked to the wrong girl at the wrong time, you could end up fighting another alpha and end up dead. So this fear is natural. It's just no longer serving you in today's society. So one technique I teach my clients is the work of art frame. So when you go to a museum or a gallery, you're looking at a piece of art. It's beautiful, but what does it mean? So when I look at a girl, I appreciate her beauty because obviously women want to be appreciated for getting ready, putting her makeup on, putting together her look, right? Just like you have, and just appreciating that. But what a lot of guys do is they either completely deny it because they're nervous, or they sexualize it and make it more than it is. So the art of work perception is really, I appreciate your beauty, thank you for looking beautiful, I acknowledge you, but I also know that you're a person and there's more to you than that. So you give her the respect that she deserves, no more, no less. At this stage, we also teach presence, which is how do you be in that moment clearly and really engage her. When you do it from this angle and you understand your own value, it's really rejection proof. Even if the girl spills her drink in your face or slaps you, it's more of a reflection on her because you're totally solid, you're totally congruent, and you're just in the moment and said, hey, I would like to meet you, you seem interesting, where is the truth in our connection? And from that angle, you can't be rejected. It can't go wrong. The worst is she's not interested in talking to you, in which case you say, have a good day or have a good night, and you leave. Another concept we talk about is core versus situational confidence. And my mentor, Owen Cook, has a great video on this. So just search for it on YouTube. But really what we're developing is core confidence. And that kicks in during A1 when you actually engage the person that you're talking to. A2 is male to female attraction. So once you open, the real open is really just to get her attention and to initiate that conversation. Then there's certain attraction triggers that you can hit where she feels attracted to you. Now there's a lot of attraction triggers and I can go through all of them, but the important thing is that generally speaking, you either lead the conversation as a guy or you make the conversation easy for her. I'll give you a quick example. A lot of my clients, you know, when I do role play with them, I'm like game me as if I'm a hot chick, like if I'm Juliana instead of Giovanni, go ahead. And this conversation goes like this. So what's your name? 
Where are you from? Do you come here often? Um, what do you do for work? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. You're a hairdresser. Oh, that's nice. Um, do you cut like a lot of hair every day? Yeah, yeah. Like, wh what days do you work? Oh, okay. Are you like downtown, like on Third Street? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like how much you charge, you know, for a haircut? Like maybe I can come in sometime. <laughs> so you can see this conversation thread. Literally, he's talking himself into becoming her customer or Mark. If if she was a stripper, he would be a Mark. And so not only that, this conversation is extremely boring. It's hitting on the same point over and over again. Hot girls are exhausted by being asked the same questions over and over again. Here's how I reverse roll and I run it. Hey, how's it going? So I'm, I've been in LA for about a year, but I'm exploring West LA this week. And it's just fascinating. I moved here a year ago from the Bay and I'm learning all these new locations like the pink wall. Anyway, I meant to ask, what was the highlight of your week? She'll say something, I'll be like, cool. I might observe her, see what she's wearing, make a comment, or I might ask her a question. But the questions I ask are not these tripwire questions that she's heard a hundred times. My questions are more unique, but still elicit a positive response. For example, you look like you know what's going on. What are some places we can check out and visit? Um, random question, what's your favorite Disney character? Very casual. Random question. If you could wake up anywhere in the world tomorrow and you can click your heels three times and teleport back instantly, where would you wake up? Okay, these are universal questions without having to cold read her that can give a fun response that you can latch onto, find the truth, and continue that conversation. Of course, your style, your nonverbal communication, your body language, your micro expressions, all of these kick into the attraction triggers. Conversationally, my mentors have taught me, you know, you can exemplify stories where you're a leader, where you have healthy emotions, you care about your family, you have strong social alliances, all of those are factors. But what I learned is that there's a way to pull those out naturally, where they become part of your life. I give her a bit of my truth, I ask for her truth, and the, another thing is most guys don't listen. They don't listen to what she's saying, they're too nervous or they don't listen to what's beneath the words. So for example, if a girl says, oh, I'm doing okay, you know, my friend was really late today. They'll be like, okay, cool. Well, uh, what's your name? Well, like, what do you do? But listen, what she's telling you is, I'm doing okay. I feel unappreciated because my friend was late and I'm not in, you know, I'm trying to get my mood back up. Can you do that for me? Or can you help me with that goal? So listen to her, acknowledge her, I'm sorry your friend was late, that must suck. I know what it feels like when you're kind of there waiting for someone. She's like, yeah, exactly, right? Now you've related to her, even though it's a negative emotion, now you can meet her where she is and then take that emotion back up again. So this is the power of actually listening. Think of A1, A2 as really offering your truth, asking a unique question to seek her truth, and then seeking that connection between your two truths. If you always seek the truth in your social interactions, you can never go wrong. Sometimes that truth is we're two people that are single, we like each other. Sometimes that truth is we have nothing in common, we're just gonna enjoy each other in the next 10 seconds and call it a day. Other times, the truth could be, I'm enjoying this person, let's see where it goes. But no matter what, if you're a truth seeker, your intention is good, your interactions cannot go wrong from that perspective. Now routines, lines, they work but they only work as kind of like oil in the engine, smoothening out the process for finding the truth between you and her. A3 is usually what qualification, or what I call frame balancing. So my mentor Eric also calls this qualification where you're qualifying the girl, making her feel like her investment for liking you is worth it. What I do is my techniques really elicit the feeling that she has when, you know, girls question whether or not this guy is who he really says he is and whether he has high value. Now high value doesn't mean you're rich or good looking, it can, but what it really means is, are you a man who believes in yourself? Do you carry yourself that way? And women are particularly good at reading micro expressions because they've been practicing it for a long time. And this is where well, if you're incongruent, or maybe if you're new, where she throws out tests. I rarely get tested anymore because of my style and my skill set, and I'm pretty congruent and authentic but sometimes tests are good. She's basically asking, are you for real? And if you have enough value and she believes you, usually your qualifications will go pretty well. So qualifying her really just means, is she the type of girl that I want and can I reward her for that? Tea or coffee? Tea 
awesome coffee. Oh my God, I can't hang out with you. Can you cook? What's your favorite dish to cook? You know, cause I've lived in so many different countries and there's so many different types of food I like. Do you do an activity that involves the movement of your body? No, you weirdo, not what you're thinking with your dirty mind. I meant like salsa dancing or Pilates. Now, this is where you seek that connection or you screen for the type of girl that you want. If she says, yes, I, I do ballet. I'm like, awesome, I, I love it, I salsa dance. It's your chance to explore different types of girls, the different tastes and interests and how it matches yours. Okay, super, super powerful. If you're more advanced, it's a way for you to screen for the type of girl that you want. Now, towards the end of attraction phase, there are certain things where, certain interactions where you feel that emotional connection. It's like, whoa, this person's on my level. She, she's on my frequency, she gets me. Now you get that feeling. When that happens, the number should be pretty solid. Or sometimes you just keep the interaction going. You go on another date or you hang out longer than you should, okay? You never know, but Sometimes it ends up being, this person will be a good friend. Or sometimes the number's not too solid and you're like, you know, maybe we just keep her in a social circle and kind of interact with her as a more friendly ally. You never really know until the second date, okay? It takes about three to five hours for someone to start relaxing and kind of behaving like their true self. So when guys tell me, uh, my text game needs work or, you know, she, the girls are not responding, always go back two steps from where the problem occurred. If your initial text's not working, that means you're first interaction wasn't as good as it needed to be. If you're not getting a second date, that means either something on the first date happened or something before that on text happened. So always go back two steps to where the actual mistake was perceived to have happened. C1, C2, C3 are supposed to be comfort. But what I realized was that here's where you build connection. What you're saying is I'm chill, I'm not needy, I'm willing to walk away. But I'm here right now because I wanna be. You seem interesting. I wanna see if that's true and if there's more, but don't get ahead of yourself because I'm not sure yet. This is where the law of equivalent exchange comes in. Wherever her interest is, you match her. Compliance meets compliance. Buy-in meets buy-in. So what does that mean? If she gives me a compliment, I say thank you, and I usually I'll compliment her back on something genuine. If she makes a statement of disinterest, I'll be like, well, I wasn't interested anyway as well. And I'll make a genuine statement that hey, I'm not that invested, chill, okay? If she complies with me or she buys me a drink, I try to return the favor as well if I like her. A big thing that most guys don't do is buy it. So for example, I'll be telling a story and at some point I'll say, does that make sense to you? And she'll see like, yeah or no. Or she'll say, I'll say something like, have you ever had a situation where you felt this way? Am I making sense right now? And these are what we call buy-in questions where she's like, yes, I'm invested. She will tell you and she's like, yeah, I don't really understand that. That means that you need to go back a step and work on previously seeking the truth in that section, which is maybe she hasn't, she doesn't believe yet that you're attractive or she doesn't believe that you're that congruent, high that you guy that you say you are. So go back a step and fix those fundamentals first. We're heading to the cabana. Are you sure you want to come with? Even though she's already coming, she's like, are you sure you want to come? What you're doing is setting very easy hoops where she feels like she's earned it, okay? And you're not making any assumptions about her intentions. Now, if you think about being treated really well at a nice hotel or being having really good service, would you like to ride this limo, sir? Let me open the door for you. These are little hoops that are not manipulative. They're just confirmations that provide a smooth transition for the person to escalate with you that makes her feel good about taking those steps. C2 are grounding sequences, and this is very powerful, and I almost don't use this if I'm not serious about the girl, because when you use it correctly, girls start falling in love with you, and I don't want to use it irresponsibly. A grounding sequence are threads that demonstrate massive value because they are telling a story about who you are, your origin story, and you're telling that story in a way that really hits emotional triggers. When she says where I'm from, I'll say, my dad was a diplomat, so that's a tough question to answer. Do you really wanna know? She's like, yeah, I wanna know. Well, I was born in Rome, but my parents are Taiwanese and my brother and I have lived in seven different countries over the last 20 years. So that that's a grounding sequence to where are you from? Later on, she might say, what do you do for work? And I say, well, freedom is a big part of my life. That's why I became an entrepreneur very young. Um, my dad always traveled and I felt like I had to make my own group of friends as I moved along. That's why I have so many different friends from so many different backgrounds and, and countries. Later on, that threat becomes, because I value freedom in my life, I'm very careful about who gets into my inner circle 
but I don't mind interacting with different types of people. I'm always looking for freedom in my work, in my dating, and to explore new things. That is why I'm doing X, Y, and Z on these projects. You can see how that same thread of seeking freedom, diversity, having an open mind about the world is a subcurrent across all of my communication with her from the beginning to where you're from to the end to you know what do you do for work and tell me more about you so now this concurrent theme of being a diplomatic kid coming from a good family not even good family just the perception of that and having those experiences are grounding that sequence of who I am as a person it's almost like a superhero's origin story because I was bullied, because I grew up in different countries, because we travel so much. My family unit is so much tighter. I'm so close to my mom and dad and my brother. These are triggers that are very emotional that everyone can relate to. And they set you up from in a very high value light. Now this particular thread, I didn't event overnight. I saw the reaction I was getting from girls and I realized this is a very high demonstration of value that actually is truthful to my life. And you have to find out what your grounding sequences are. But the more sequences you ground, whether it your family, your particular hobby or job, your dancing history perhaps, or your salsa dancer, those threads start really, really digging in deep. You're kind of like planting roots almost, and they grow into this identity of who you are. It's super powerful. In comedy routines, comedians use it, they call it callback humor. So let's say Dave Chappelle has this one line he uses in the beginning. He might use it in the middle, like O.J. Simpson joke, for example, and then he'll use it again at the end. This is super powerful when you weave it into your conversation. And this is one of the ways that I work with my clients to really bring out those congruent grounding stories that really get them strong results with girls that are like, I need to know more about you. Your story can also be something bigger than yourself. Maybe you're really devoted to saving the planet. Maybe you're really into politics. Whatever that might be is for you. My life story, if I died, my legacy would be one of finding truth, finding freedom, following my own footsteps, and really carving out my own path, okay? This is not done as a single speech. These are done in little bits throughout the interaction. It's super powerful when you know how it works. The third step, C3, is really connection triggers. So in the old N3 model, it's attraction and comfort. But what I realized is that comfort is not that powerful. Having a plumber come over to fix the toilet. Now you don't know this guy other than his online internet website, but you're comfortable with him fixing your toilet, coming into your house. At the bank, you're comfortable handing a $100,000 check to the bank teller. Why? Because the environment is comfortable. It's set up where there's trust. You might be comfortable with someone walking next to you even though you don't know them, but connection goes deeper than comfort. Connection is when you feel like the universe brought you two together. There's something about this person that they are on my frequency, they're on my channel. And when that little shift happens, it's super, super powerful when you mix it with the fact that she's already attracted to you. Because a girl can feel attracted to a lot of good looking alpha guys, but when you're a minority like me, you, you have to compete on a, on a deeper level. So when you build, you know, this guy looks attractive. He's not usually my, my type, but he presents himself well. Then you build those connection triggers. Then that's when you sink in and make a really strong impression. Try to keep connection triggers very surface level if you just want like sm shorter term relationships because these are super powerful and you should use the power responsibly. A lot of girls feel, you know, let on if, if you do this wrong. So. Be careful how you use it. I'll give you a structure that I teach my clients that turns your vulnerable story into a hero story. Let me give you the example and let me then break the structure down. When I was a kid, I loved dinosaurs. My dad would buy me these like big dinosaur toys and I was so happy up until I was five. Then my parents stopped buying me these toys. They thought that I was too old for them. I got really angry one night, one night and I started crying and they would ignore me. And I remember I got so angry, I shouted, and they would still make jokes about it today, my dad. He said, I will, when I grow up, I'm gonna be a big dinosaur and make lots of money and buy my own dinosaurs. <laughs> so my dad would tell me this, and I remember, wow, from such a young age, that's where my entrepreneurial spirit came from. When someone ever, whenever someone makes a joke, like I can't do something or I can't get something, I'm always like, but I'm gonna be a big dinosaur. And they're like, huh, what do you mean? It's like, that means I'm gonna figure out my own way to achieve what I wanted, okay? 
Now this is a funny kind of vulnerable story. You know, it shows a vulnerable part of my young self wanting something but not being able to get it. So the structure of this is you tell a vulnerable story. Now you don't want to go into like super traumatic stuff, right? It takes a little bit more skill to do that well and to, to have it turn out positive. But usually it's the problem that made you realize something. So this event happened that made me feel very vulnerable. And then I realized that this was a problem. So what happened was, here's what I learned from this problem or here's what I did about it. Sometimes we never, we maybe in the past, we didn't do the right thing. But what you can say is I learned this experience from this vulnerable moment. And you have to, have to point it in a positive direction, inspirational direction. It's almost like this is my origin story of what happened and I became the superhero and now this is how I'm going into the future. When you do this right and you practice this, it's super powerful. It gets to the root of who you are, lets her know who you are and makes that connection. And when you say, do you know how that feels? She's gonna be like, everyone has that one moment where they couldn't get something they wanted, right? Or you could say, everyone, have you ever had been bullied and felt like your friends didn't have your back? Everybody has the experience of someone not having their back or maybe someone who has their back. Everyone has a story that can relate to that. When you point back to the core emotion of that connection and you relay it in a way where they can hear your story and tell theirs, then you have this emotional connection that you're building on. That's super powerful because it gets to the core of who you are. This is how you get girls to fall in love with you. Don't just take my word for it. Dr. Helen Fisher, a leading anthropologist and best-selling author, calls this the crystallization effect. In her book, Anatomy of Love, she explains how this works. Crystallization is when the person indeed perceives the weaknesses of their idol, but they simply cast these flaws aside or convince themselves that these defects were unique and charming. Moreover, they begin to focus on the most trivial aspects of the adorned and aggrandize these. So that brings us to S1. Now, this is a little non-PC, but at some point you have to be alone to be able to continue and to, to have a smooth interaction. The old pickup days, it's like, how do I manipulate being alone with a girl? But really, if your game is good, she'll want to be alone with you. You just have to do it in a way where she won't feel judged by other people, okay? It's like, she wants this, I wants this. How do I move it along smoothly? Sometimes this is not possible and that's okay. She's with her friends, her sister's chaperoning her, she's driving back. It's not a big deal. You don't have to push for the clothes. Now I understand that there's a certain type of night game where it's like everything's wild, the party's going on and you know, she's leaving the next day. There is a certain rush and excitement to that. If you can do it honestly, I don't see any harm in that as long as you have good intentions and you don't lie about anything. It's okay for a guy to put himself out there and push for what he believes he wants with and what she believes she wants and have a good night. Where I draw the line is like, if you're manipulating people, if you're saying things that are not true, or if you're pushing for something she doesn't want, then that's an issue. But I believe good game really requires time bridges. In other words, if you don't see her, the impression you made was so memorable that she'll want to see you again on the next date, what we call a time bridge. There's a time where there's a bridge in between where you're not gonna be interacting with her, or maybe you'll be texting her, but you won't be seeing each other Face to face. Now, if you run good game, there's a lot of different techniques like future pacing, like talking about the next date while you're there with her. And of course, we talk about text game. But ultimately, if your initial game is good and you have a trash and comfort and connection, she will want to see you again. And the other thing is, a lot of guys ask me, you know, how do I text? No amount of text game is going to get her out if your initial game was weak. Now, good text game can turn some mistakes into dates. And also good texting can teach you when not to text, like those like trigger phrases that every guy says, like how's your day, it's so boring. Good text game, think of good text game as a good tennis racket. Now, a good player, the good racket can be a great tool, help him hit harder, you know, swing better, but ultimately it's a skill set that gets him to win. Now S2, S3 is a little bit beyond the topic, but basically when sex is about to happen, there is this feeling of, even for the guy, comfort, but arousal. So you're very comfortable, you feel very safe, but you're also aroused. Those two triggers are really important for women. For guys, we think from watching like videos that you know you just need arousal, but in reality, we also need comfort. We just need less of it than women. When you can understand this and you can plan for this for her sake, it's super attractive. Now, my the reason I'm not going to this, not only because it's not safe to publicly talk about these things these days, but it's that you don't need to worry about this section if you honestly run good game ahead of this. If the connection is real, the attraction is real, if you sought the truth and you made her feel comfortable and you treated her with the best 
possible experience that you can provide for her as a man, then this S section will automatically happen, okay? Try not to see sex as the end goal. Now, a lot of it's guys, it is, but and to be honest with you, it can be really fulfilling for you and for her. But what you really want, I think, in my opinion, is to wake up next to her or, you know, afterward be like, she seems really cool. I still want to spend time with her. I want to hang out with her. That's the best feeling because anyone can get off and, you know, find the way. But when you actually meet someone that you actually connect with, even when you meet a guy friend, you feel like they get you. That's rare. So your skill set to be able to do this, to, to trigger these rare emotions that people have like once every few years, consistently over and over again, every night, you're gonna feel so fulfilled and you're gonna feel freedom because you can meet any girl you want, trigger these emotions, find that connection, and even for yourself, find the girls and maybe the friends that you want for the rest of your life. You won't need to run game, you can just be yourself and follow this process. I know so many people that stay in codependent, unhealthy relationships because they secretly fear that they will never find a person like that again or they'll fear how much work it takes to find another girl at that level. And it's kind of sad to watch because here is a system that consistently gets you those connections. So when you choose to be with someone, it's not from a place of fear. It's from, I really like this person even though I know I can go out and get another one. Um, what we've built here is important to me. Now, true mastery of this cycle takes field work, okay? So going out of the house and actually doing social interactions. Guys ask me all the time, can I just do online dating? Sure, but in my opinion, online dating is a funnel where you practice and you get into A2, start there. So you skip the whole opening process. And I know guys who just do this and they're fine with that, but here's my take. I think guys who only rely on online dating, I have never ever seen a master coach come from that. They may get really good at, you know, hooking girls on, on the apps, getting them out on dates, and even making them their girlfriends. I know guys who are married through online dating, but a lot of times they don't have that raw field experience. Know what it feels like when, you, when you're dominant as a man, when you're challenged, how to deal with that social pressure, learning how to go out there and hunt for yourself. It's such an important skill set that I think every guy should have a rite of passage to go through where they learn how to get girls attracted to them by being more themselves, more congruent, seeking the truth, and really gaming honestly, but gaming hard. Now look, this model is based on the women's time frame for feeling comfortable and attracted to the guy. Seven to 10 hours. It takes about that amount of time to really feel like you understand this person. This model is built for good intention guys who want the best experience for the girl who want to bring out their true personality. Like any tool, it can be abused and used the wrong way. Just like you can build a house with a hammer or use it to hit someone. I can say that when it's done by a genuine guy, this attraction cycle, it doesn't fade. So there's no fallout from her discovering that you're actually a player or a douchebag. You know, a lot of these guys who push for the, for the clothes or do these like, weird game moves where they're like, oh, I'm super alpha, I know exactly what to say, I'm a player. Over time, she starts seeing these negative things, like, ah, oh, this guy's, you know, doing this again, and I feel like a little bit dirty for sleeping with him. You don't want that feeling. The opposite feeling happens with the authentic attraction cycle. She's like, over time, she's like, wow, I like this guy more and more, the more I spend time with him. Because you're always congruent and honest by bringing out your best self. When you're not there, she starts missing you, like, you know, I don't, I'm not getting these emotions or this type of connection with other types of guys that I'm seeing. Let me go find Giovanni again. So this is how you get girls starting to chase you by the time you really master the skill set. This is a really key component of me being able to date models as a skinny Asian guy because I couldn't just rely on my race or, you know, my conventional looks. I had to figure out a deeper way to hook and to interact with the girls I wanted. If my explanation was useful, if you liked this model, if you have questions about it, leave a comment below. If I get enough interest in this, I might consider making videos where I break down each part of the cycle in more detail uh, and really teach you how to implement this from scratch. If you're curious about how this works now and just wanna find it and use it, check out the links in my bio. The first day formula starts this process, gives you the 187 
field tested lines and techniques that get you started on this journey. And there are links to get coaching. I can tell you now that I'm, as I'm growing my business, I won't be coaching forever, but now I enjoy it. So I have some spots available, but six months, a year from now, I probably won't be coaching one-on-one. It's not a scalable business model. So if you want coaching, if you're really a good guy who just needs some guidance, check out the coaching links below.